Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I wish you a warm welcome to the ECDC press conference. I hope you can see me and see our guests and hear as well. My name is Andrea Horvath and I will be moderating this press conference. Uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce our speakers, European Commissioner for Health and Food Safety, Mrs. Stella Kiriakides, uh, Minister of Health and Social Affairs, uh, Mrs. Lena Hollingen, and of course, our ECDC Director, Mrs. Andrea Amon. As you have been informed, the focus of this briefing is matters regarding EU action and collaboration, the current ep epidemiological situation, and measures needed to continue addressing the pandemic. Of course, and Commissioner Kiriakides' visit to Sweden as part of the European Commission's ongoing efforts <clears throat> to support the deployment of national vaccine vaccination campaigns against COVID and uh, in all of the EU member states. Each of the speakers will have approximately a short introduction, approximately one, two minutes of short introduction, and then we will open the floor for Q&As. So in order to ask questions, please raise your hands and kindly introduce yourselves and your media outlets, and the floor shall be given to you. So without further ado, I would kindly ask uh, our commissioner to give the, take the floor. Thank you, and good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I want to take the... So without further ado... I kindly ask uh, our commissioner to be take the Sorry? Hello. First of all, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I want to take this opportunity to start by thanking Minister Hallengren for inviting me to Sweden uh, today to discuss our common efforts against this pandemic. We have seen in the last few weeks the rapid increase of the Omicron variant and this has, of course, led to many countries introducing new measures and to strengthen uh, their non-pharmaceutical interventions uh, at the end of 2021. I'm particularly pleased in this context to be able to be here and joined by the director of ECDC, uh, Andre Amon. We've been working hand in hand from the very beginning of the pandemic uh, to address all the latest challenges. And I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, the director and all of the staff DC for this very close collaboration, for their dedication and their professionalism in very difficult circumstances. Since the beginning of the pandemic, ECDC has provided invaluable support and guidance to member states so that we can protect all the citizens. And uh, I believe that this is important to their part and their role European um, uh, Union uh, coordination would not be where it is today. Omicron is now dominant in uh, Sweden as well as in many other member states. We are seeing record numbers increase day by day. We, are, we know that what we need to do is to uh, increase our, um, our vaccination uh, uh, rollouts and I want to take this opportunity to congratulate Sweden for a very successful vaccination campaign. Uh, around, I believe, 85% of the adult population has now been fully vaccinated, and Sweden uh, is moving forward with more people uh, seeking boosters every day. At the EU level, we have now fully vaccinated over 80% of our adult population. This is a very important milestone especially in terms of the spreading uh, Omicron variant. It is important that we continue and continue with booster shots in order to protect people from the most serious effects of this virus. Vaccination remains a key tool to prevent against serious illness. And I once again want to take this opportunity to encourage everyone to be vaccinated. Despite um, good vaccination coverage in Sweden, we know that millions of citizens in Europe have not been vaccinated at all, and we need to change this in order to overcome this pandemic. And our personal behavior, our personal responsibility matters. Vaccination is an act of, uh, of so social solidarity, but we also have to look at our own efforts and responsibility uh, enforcing public health measures when these are requested and required. Simple measures like hand hygiene, social distancing and wearing masks work against this virus and all viruses. 
lastly, not least, this is a global pandemic and I want to take my, this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude for Sweden's engagement in vaccine sharing as part of Team Europe. From the beginning of the pandemic, the EU has underlined the importance to global solidarity and we should continue to deliver at this point. So on this front. So, Minister, once again, thank you for all that, that you are doing for the very close collaboration um, across the, the, the proposals for the European Health Union with the pandemic, for your hospitality in Stockholm and uh, for your continued support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kira Kides and Minister Hallenden, please take the floor. Thank you. And once again, the COVID pandemic has proved itself to be a marathon, not a sprint. Europe and Sweden have been hit by a new wave of infections. Healthcare workers are once again being strained and strict measures are put into place to limit the spread of the virus. Earlier today, the Swedish government announced a new set of restrictions to complement measures that have already been implemented. We must now do all what we can to help follow the restrictions and make a vaccination appointment. Remember that the vaccines save lives every day and every hour. Without them, we will be in a far worse situation. The EU has played and still plays a vital role in ensuring access to vaccines in Sweden and all the member states. Thank you, Commissioner, for that and for a great work. And thank you, Director, for all the work done by the ECDC, supporting the member states in managing the pandemic. And I'm proud that the agency is located here in Solna in Sweden. We must now continue to cooperate to combat this disease, strengthen our health security framework and improve public health. Together, that will make us better equipped to deal with this and future health challenges. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Hallengren. And now we go to our director, Andrea, please, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, I'm very pleased that uh, Commissioner uh, Kyriakides and Minister Hallengren uh, came here to visit today uh, and um, we could uh, present uh, how we work and how we uh, are set up, uh, uh, how, where, we, where we are. Um, as of the situation, uh, what we are seeing right now in Europe is uh, really a high and rapidly increasing case notification rate. Um, uh, and at the same time, the death notification remain low and stably low uh, so far. Omicron is now 22% um, uh, of, um, uh, of, of the sequenced uh, samples. But there are some countries where Omicron is already the predominant strain. And uh, we expect that it uh, will be also EU-wide the predominant strain in uh, a few weeks. Uh, there are still some uncertainties around this uh, new variant. Um, it seems that on an individual level, it uh, causes less severe disease. Um, uh, uh, however, uh, through their the easier transmissibility, it affects a large amount of people, uh, causing uh, absenteeism that affects uh, uh, essential workers, uh, healthcare workers, um, uh, and public workers in general uh, a lot. Therefore, we have uh, issued a guidance very recently, last Friday, uh, on how to um, deal with uh, shortening uh, quarantine and, and isolation uh, in case of high pressure to the, uh, to the health system. Uh, because um, uh, that's the only way that countries can cope. Now, it's very clear that this is the, the, uh, an emergency measure where we have to still uh, see how much uh, met, uh, uh, evidence we can uh, find for this. Um, I 
uh, want to uh, reiterate the uh, pleas for vaccination. Uh, it is uh, our best uh, instrument right now, uh, and it still does, the vaccines still do uh, prevent severe uh, disease and death also for the new variants. Thank you. Thank you, Director Alman, and uh, uh, thank you to all our uh, speakers. And I will now open the floor for your questions. So please, if you have any, just uh, raise your hand and we will give you the floor. So far, no hands. I, I cannot believe that there are no questions. So maybe we need some warm up a little bit. Okay. Okay, please, could you please take the floor? Yes, I'm going to ask Lena Hallengren in Swedish. Lena, idrottsföreningar och kulturarrangörer, kommer de att kompenseras ekonomiskt för det här inkomstbortfallet nu när det inför ett deltagartak och varför eller varför inte? Yeah, Sorry, yeah. do I have to repeat it? Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure she understood. I'm not sure she understood. Hör, hörde du vad jag sa? Vi har glömt mikrofonen. Nu hörs inte du. Aftonbladet. Jag hör inte eh, du får jättegärna upprepa svaret. Ja. Jag tror jag tappade dig där. Ja, och då är det väldigt kort på svenska eftersom våra övriga deltagare inte, inte förstår frågan eller resonemanget så för respekt för dem är jag väldigt kortfattad och säger att vi har ju sedan tidigare eh, lämnat besked när det handlar om omställningsstöd, omsättningsstöd och vilka förlängningar som sker eh, och vi har idag inte givit några nya stöd utan det är de som, som gäller så här långt tills vi nu besked. Och Lena, även en nöjesfråga. Melodifestivalen säljer ju fortfarande biljetter till deras arenashower och de börjar ju redan i februari och mars. Är det här någonting som kommer att genomföras eller finns det en risk att det inte blir av? Det kan inte jag svara på om de kommer att äga rum. Just nu så är det ju begränsningar när det handlar om, eller vi uppmanar till begränsningar när det handlar om kontakter och trängsel och från den. 19 januari så kommer det också vara ett deltagartak sannolikt på 500 personer. Men, men det är som du säger, de ligger en bit framåt i tiden så att det är för tidigt att svara på det. Och en annan fråga då. Är spridningen av RS-virus och influensa en av orsakerna till de nya restriktionerna precis som covid-19 också är det? Nej, restriktioner vidtas ju med stöd av den bemyndigande lagen som pandemilagen är och den finns ju till just med tanke på pandemin och spridningen av covid-19. Sen försvårar ju precis som du säger virus och säsongsinfluensa för vården men åtgärderna kan vi vidta när det handlar om pandemin. Men innebär det då att det nya normala är att vi stänger ner samhället när vården då inte riktigt orkar mer? Ska det behöva bli så här varje gång vintern kommer och smittorna ökar? Det är inte bedömningen. Vi är en pandemi och den pågår fortfarande och det har blivit väldigt tydligt så att vaccinera sig blir viktigt och det gäller ju framförallt mot covid-19 men också mot andra, andra mot säsongsinfluensa som också kan vaccinera sig mot. Men det är inte syftet, nej. Many thanks to Afton Bladet. Maybe we will have another question from, from somebody. I see uh, there is a hand. So from Dagens Nyheter, please go ahead Amanda. Yes, hello. My name is Amanda Dahl. I'm from Dagens Nyheter. I have a question that I think is for Commissioner Stella Kiriakides and perhaps also Lena Hallengren about um, the Covid-bevis. Jag har tappat vad vi brukar kalla det på engelska. The, um, Um, vaccination, the proof of vaccination that is used to ent when you travel in the EU. I wonder how far away is a decision to uh, uh, make three doses uh, the full vaccination or the 
the real vaccination in those uh, passports or proofs. Stella, would you like to answer, maybe describe the situation within the union? Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, the COVID certificate, I would say from the beginning, is uh, an, an example of good practice that we have put together. And I just want to share with you that this is now being adopted and shared by over 60 countries. They are all on board because we have found that this is a way where we can ensure for citizens to move safely and freely across the EU and not only. So this is very important that the, the digital COVID certificate has proved its success over the last few months. However, we are also aware that this certificate, and this was the way it was designed from the beginning, needs to be flexible to be able to follow the science. And this is the way it has been put together. And so we have come forward with a proposal, taking into account the science as has been given to us by ECDC and the European Medicines Agency to um, uh, put a validity period uh, of, up, of uh, nine months following the initial vaccination coverage, which takes into account, to, uh, into account uh, the science. And this is the proposal we have put uh, forward, and I believe it is important that as many member states uh, are coordinated on this use as possible, because this allows uh, citizens to have not only safety and freedom of travel and mobility, but also something that is greatly missed from the beginning of this pandemic is predictability, to know exactly what is expected of you when you are moving across the EU or into uh, across other countries. So uh, we have put a proposal for the validity of up to nine months or nine months after the initial coverage. Um, uh, Andrea Amon may want to further comment on this. And uh, we are um, uh, very encouraged by the fact that it has been uh, adopted by so many uh, member states and not only. I believe over 600 to 700 million certificates have now been issued. Thank you. No, I have nothing to add, but just uh, agreeing with, with the Commissioner saying that it's extremely important. This is something which uh, is giving us the possibility to, to travel between our countries. Uh, remember the situation a year and a half ago before the, the, um, the, the COVID uh, certificates, how difficult it was and how different the, uh, the rules and the quarantines and everything was between countries. I hope this answers the question posed by Amanda. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you, Amanda, for asking the question. So far, I don't see any other hands. Okay, uh, Johannes Ledo, please. Uh... Uh, yes, hello, my name is Johannes Ledo uh, with uh, the news agency AFP. I, I have a, just a follow-up question for Stella um, Kiriakides. Uh, you met you when you discussed the COVID certificate, you said that they would potentially be valid for nine months. I uh, suppose that they would then be extended if somebody got a booster shot. Do you have any sort of information of how long they would be extended after somebody received a, a booster shot? Uh, nine months is our, is our proposal that has been put forward. The booster shot has not uh, does not have an end period to it uh, as it has been put forward. We are constantly evaluating the science um, on this. Uh, and I just wanted to uh, to add to this, uh, because I think that this is very important, that this is really um, uh, a certificate that was developed in a very short period of time, and I want to reinforce what the Minister has said. Uh, what, what we had before was this level of unpredictability and different member states requesting uh, uh, different uh, requirements in order for citizens to travel. The certificate um, uh, includes a vaccination state, um, uh, PCR, te uh, PCR testing as well as uh, if you've recovered from COVID. And I want to say, say here, which I think is important, is I will never cease to take the opportunity to stress that although the cases of COVID uh, Omicron variant are rising very quickly, 
we are not where we were two years ago. We're not where we were one year ago. We have safe and effective vaccines, uh, and over 80% uh, of the uh, population, the adult population of the EU vaccinated. And the certificate comes to add to uh, a strong EU vaccination campaign that allows us now to have a different sense of uh, of safety in our in our in our movements. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Hannes, for your question. If there will be any other questions, please let us know. We still have time for, for one question at least. So use it. Use the opportunity with our guests here. I guess if there are none, I want to thank you for joining this press conference. I want to thank our guests and speakers today. And uh, I wish you all the best from ECDC until we meet again. Goodbye.